Awesome. So uh, again, welcome everyone uh, to tonight's Creative Voices sessions on the uh, Dunderay Print Workshop. My name is Steven Snyder. I am the Gallery and Communications Coordinator for the West Vancouver Community Arts Council. And we are thrilled uh, to be able to talk about this wonderful organization with some amazing artists and a very talented uh, writer and historian. Um, but before we get into the meat of tonight, uh, I just think we should take a moment to recognize uh, that here in where I'm coming from anyway, the Silk Purse Arts Center in West Vancouver, um, that we are incredibly grateful uh, to be on the lands of our host nations, the Squamish Nation, the tsleil Nation, and the Musqueam Nation, uh, to have wonderful arts and culture activities in this beautiful land. And as uh, guests and settlers here, uh, we are incredibly uh, happy to be here and thankful to be here. And uh, now is a time to uh, you know, actively listen uh, to our hosts and support our hosts in uh, matters of stewardship of this land and of our communities, because um, they have a lot uh, to offer and a lot that we can definitely learn from, and uh, we should all be working together as a community. Um, and that's a little bit about uh, what we're going to talk about tonight, community, um, because the Dunderave Print Workshop has definitely created uh, a strong and thriving community of artists. And uh, so let's uh, introduce our panel. So if everyone um, just wants to introduce themselves and say a little bit about uh, your background, we'll go for it. So let's start with, uh, let's start with Arnold. Yes, uh, my name is Arnold Shives. I, uh, I was invited to join the Dunray Print Workshop in 19... 72, uh, not long after it had been formed. And uh, I've been a, uh, working as an artist for, well, since the late, uh, since about 1968, I guess, 67 or 68. And uh, I'm still at it. <laughs> and uh, uh, I guess I now live here in, in North Vancouver with my wife. Yeah, that's about about it for starters. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, we'll definitely get into more stuff uh, as the night goes on. Uh, next, let's move on to Gloria. Tell us a bit about yourself. Hey, well, <clears throat> I uh, I joined basically when it had moved to Granville Island. And started taking some classes and um, I can tell you the story after how but anyway I did join and I've enjoyed the whole experience people from all over coming into it because we have the working area right there and the gallery behind in front and right across from the food from the market which is great great shops for all our artistic you know needs or desires as that may be so uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm quite happy with it. And I'll tell you more about the new stuff later. <laughs> Excellent. And, and Janet, uh, please introduce yourself to our audience. All right. Uh, I'm a high school, a uh, retired high school history teacher. And uh, I freelance write. Um, art is one of my passions. And I um, wrote about a BC printmaker, Sybil Andrews, talked at the uh, Silk Purse about her, about the book, about her biography. And it led me down the rabbit hole of printmaking, which is a whole other world. So I took courses at Dunderay, then I became a volunteer shop attendant. And um, then I uh, worked on this 50th anniversary booklet. So one thing led to another. Um, I love history, I love art, and uh, I write a lot of local histories, and this is a gem of a history. Uh, this oldest continuous printmaking workshop in British Columbia. So it's, it's a, quite a landmark. 
and uh, it's been wonderful to uh, be involved. Excellent. That's excellent. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, those are our wonderful panelists. And uh, if you're interested in finding out more about them, um, in the chat, there are links to uh, websites, um, as well as the uh, Dunderave Print Workshops uh, website. So feel free to uh, check those out. So tonight, yes, we're talking about the Dunderave Print Workshop and Gallery. Uh, which, as uh, everyone has just mentioned, is celebrating its 50th anniversary, which is pretty amazing. Uh, and uh, one of the things that spurred uh, this, uh, this event tonight to help celebrate it and raise awareness about their uh, anniversary was uh, Janet uh, coming into uh, the Arts Council's uh, space, the Silk Purse, um, to show off these, uh, these great books uh, that she helped uh, write. Um, this great little history of the Dunderay Print Workshop, um, and it's got all these really fantastic uh, photos of the space um, throughout the years, the spaces, because there are some shots from uh, when it was here in Dunderay and through Granville Island, and there's a great write-up, and as Janet had said, there is far much more information than could fit in this book, mm -hmm. um, but it's a really, a really great piece, um, and the cover is a beautiful piece of a print by an artist named Betty Jean Drummond. Mm -hmm. Pretty beautiful work. And uh, so these books are available um, for sale um, as a fundraiser for the Dunderave Print Workshop. Um, and there are a couple of places you can find them. You can get them uh, at the print workshop itself. Um, you can also get them here at the Silk Purse. Um, and all of the funds uh, go to help them out um, because they are. Uh, uh, an organization uh, that, uh, you know, every once in a while needs a little bit of help, especially right now um, after uh, the pandemic we've been dealing with. All arts organizations have been hit pretty hard. So uh, a great little fundraiser if you're interested in learning more about them and having a great little keepsake and supporting, uh, as Janet said, BC's uh, oldest continuous print workshop. Uh, go to one of those places and pick one up. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, so Janet came with those books and we thought, this is fantastic. Let's talk about it. Let's celebrate. Um, and we talked to Lonnie Tratt from the Dunderave Print Workshop and she suggested uh, some great artists to talk to. And Janet suggested some artists as well. And that's how we got Arnold and Gloria involved to talk about their time there and uh, a little bit about their work as well. So uh, let's get into the history of it. Uh, so uh, it started uh, as the name would imply, which I didn't realized for quite a while <laughs> that the Dunderave Print Workshop started here in Dunderave in uh, West Vancouver. And so Janet, since you did some uh, the research on this book, why don't you tell us a bit about, uh, about its history and origins here in West Van? Okay. Um, well, B.C. Binning, who is another great figure from the West Vancouver community, um, an internationally known artist, uh, designed and built a home in uh, West Van in 1940 and lived there from up until his death in um, 1976. Uh, he was in his retirement years, in his 60s. Uh, he had founded the Fine Arts Department out at UBC and had done many other, had, had many other achievements in the arts community besides being a great artist himself. So he had his own studio in his home, but he generously, as was his way, uh, was thinking about young artists coming up. And so he got together with Wayne Eastcott, who I was able to uh, interview via email from Japan. He's still an active artist. Um, and he told me some of the story as well. And then they got together with uh, three other young artists and they all met at B.C. Binning's home. And uh, Binning had done all the paperwork. He drew up a constitution. Uh, they're registered as a non, Dunderave would be registered as a nonprofit artist group uh, for the purpose of printmaking. One of the young printmakers there, Dan McDougall, offered the uh, shed in the back of his house in uh, Dunderave. So they said, oh, Dunderay, this is in our hood. 
we'll call it Dunder Ave Print Workshop. So members would pay a yearly fee to kind of keep things running. Uh, uh, Wayne offered courses, which brought in new members. Um, and you'll be hearing a bit from Arnold. I talked to him for the booklet as well. And he, he'll tell you a bit about how, as he said, he got involved the next year. So it was operating out of West Vancouver uh, up until they were forced to move when uh, new owners came. Uh, and that was in the late, late 70s. In the meantime, Binning passed away in 76, as I mentioned, but he would come down, even though he had his own studio, he would come down and chat with the young printmakers and he kind of helped Wayne keep it going. So to me, one of the themes of the history is it's the little print workshop that could. It just would survive all these financial crises, moves, uh, people coming and going. And it just, it was this collective of artists who, you know, with not with humble funding, but, you know, it was basically members fees, were able to sustain it. And um, the fact, I think Binning would be pleased and surprised that 50 years on from the day that that constitution was signed by five artists that, uh, the, that this place has survived. So he, he was the real mover and shaker behind it. And, um, and then a lot more people came through that, that kept it going. Quick little, oh, where'd it go? This uh, article here, um, uh, if everyone can see, I just pulled it up from Monte Cristo Magazine um, that Janet actually wrote um, kind of about this time. Um, so, and there's one of uh, Binning's uh, awesome pieces. Um, so it's a great article that goes, uh, you know, more in depth uh, to what Janet was just saying. And there's, I think, a quote from Arnold in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, check that. I'll put the link to this article uh, in the in the chat as well if anyone wants to go in and, and read it. That's very cool. Um, yeah, so we can move on then, I guess, to uh, a little bit about, as you mentioned, Janet, they had to move um, and mm -hmm. you were there at the time, Arnold, so feel free to jump in. Uh, the move to uh, Granville Island. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned a little bit the they had to give up the space, but can you go a little bit more into that, um, into the move to Granville Island and what that entailed and how they found the, the spot? Okay, well, there was sort of, um, as I pieced it together, talking to people, um, it uh, there was a bit of a crisis. There wasn't a place when they had to move in the late seventies and um, Mary Blaze, who discovered the world of printmaking through Wayne Eastcott's course, she lived, she still uh, does art. She's a, a, still a practicing artist. So I talked to her and she said she offered her garage for the big printing press and all the supplies until a place could be found. So that was the late seventies. And then it moved downtown to very briefly on the second floor of um, an office building on Pender Street. So, it was there. And then, of course, when Granville Island opened up in 79 and welcomed artists, that was a very exciting time in the city for, for artists. So Dunderave was the first tenant in the net loft. That's where they are now. Um, so that was just a, a great bit of good fortune. And um, so they moved all the equipment. Mary Blaze was part of that. There were other artists as well, other members. And she said her son helped build this, uh, the sink for the acid bath materials for the etching. So they moved in, they kind of had, got everything going. And, um, and it's been there ever since. And it's certainly been renovated and, um, and a front gallery was put in. So over time, it's, uh, there's been more to it, but uh, that was a lifesaver. That was what a very important uh, opportunity that kept the gallery going. 
And you were there during all this, right, Arnold? Yes. <clears throat> yes, it was um, It was a bit of a sad day when uh, we had to shut down the uh, West Van operation. Um, Wayne, uh, Wayne Eastcott and I uh, uh, were there to uh, strip it down and uh, uh, take it, it uh, truck the, the equipment, especially the press, to uh, Mary Blaze's place in North Vancouver. And uh, there was no workshop. You know, she has a small garage and there was, <laughs> there was no way to turn that into a uh, in workshop. So uh, those days were over for me, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, and, but I, I guess we weren't there that long. Maybe it was a year. I'm not sure. Something like that. And then a place did open up in, uh, uh, we got that space uh, in, uh, I think it was off Richards at um, in downtown Vancouver on Pender. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know I was storing some of my paintings there. <laughs> of all things, there was some space in the back, unless I'm uh, fantasizing, but it seems to be. Uh, <laughs> I was storing some of my paintings in that, uh, some of my old oil paintings in that space. And uh, uh, so uh, in any event, there wasn't much printmaking happen, happening there. And, uh, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I was very happy when we uh, found that space on Granville Island. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 I didn't do much work on Granville Island actually. Um, uh, I don't know, I guess I was working there for maybe a couple of years and then I faded away. I got, you know, studios uh, elsewhere and, uh, and, uh, uh, and then I got into um, working with um, printers uh, who would do, well, I worked with printers, uh, actually Gordon Smith introduced me to uh, uh, the printers called Crown Printers. They were lithographic printers, Diane and Rob. And uh, so I did some, that was a productive era for me, but it meant I sort of was basically shifting away from Dunderay, um, Gravel Island Dunderay. And uh, Anyway, that's um, so I let my membership lapse and I haven't really been much in contact since uh, I suppose the mid 80s, really. Uh, yeah. But I've kept in contact with Wayne Eastcott. He's about the only person I've kept in contact with. In fact, I got an email from him just a few days ago. Uh, with photographs from a, a show that he's just uh, just closed in uh, Yokohama in Japan, a solo show. And he, he sold a few pieces and, you know, he's got some collectors there and looked like it was pretty good. I said, I wish I, I, wish I could have been there. <laughs> but what with COVID and everything, it wasn't going to be happening, of course. But uh, anyway... Um, yeah, I've kept in contact with Wayne over the years, and he's the one who actually, uh, it's nothing official, but he, he basically gave me the rudimentaries uh, of printmaking. I, I'd studied printmaking. I'd, studied, I'd taken a, uh, an etching course in San Francisco at the San Francisco Art Institute and also a introductory litho course but that's it. Then I left it alone because I wasn't specializing in printmaking. I was specializing in painting. So um, Wayne is the one who uh, who uh, really introduced me to printmaking. He's the one and sort of opened my eyes. Maybe I was mature enough. I'd uh, 
you know, learned enough over the years and uh, realized, wait a minute, printmaking isn't just reproducing images. It's actually a whole, it's a whole discipline in itself. You get uh, effects, you get, or, or you, you, you uh, get results that you simply cannot get in any other, uh, uh, any other fashion. Um, uh, so, uh, th it, you know, that was a, something of a uh, eureka moment for me, <laughs> really, discovering that. And then uh, Dunder Ave was just such a uh, peaceful and pastoral setting. And when it was in Dunder Ave, that was a, uh, I mean, mostly had the place to myself. <laughs> <laughs> the word hadn't spread. This is a great place. <laughs> Great place to work. A few people would come by, but uh, anyway, uh, maybe I should pass it on to Janet or Gloria at this point. Oh, yeah, that was some of what you talked about, Arnold, was a great segue into uh, how our artists uh, became involved uh, with the Dundere Print Workshop. Uh, so, Gloria, why don't you tell us how you got involved? Well, <clears throat> I um, was married to a Navy fellow. And you moved all the time, and so I I work mostly full time, and um, you know we go to a new place and you'd know nobody. So I'd take an art course for a change because it's like I was in research, so it's like a, an experiment. You know, I tried um, oil first, and then in Ottawa School of Art, they had printmaking, and I thought, well, that was different, and it was itching. And so I had always, you know, when you get into art, you read about the the old masters and I loved Rembrandt's portraits of course but I loved his etchings because uh, the plate would have uh, the grooves were all the ink and then you wipe it off and you print and get a linear look if you wipe it all off but if you didn't wipe it all the background would look sort of impressionistic and so he would do different wipings to see how he would do a painting and that's why his would emerge from a darker background rather than be totally linear, some were linear. So that, I thought that was quite exciting. And then even more exciting, because I, I'm color drives me. That's my, you know, can be line for some, it can be this, but for me it was color. And um, Mary Cassatt, I always loved all of her beautiful portraits of her families and children, and, but she did, worked with Dega and did these um, colored etchings. And I, okay, that really caught my eye. So anyway, that stuck with me. And in Ottawa, we came here and I'm again in the research building for the cancer agency across the street from the main one. And um, I was going home one night with my big white paper and roll and and the director said, oh, are you off to make a poster for a meeting? And I said, no, this is for my, my, my other life and do watercolor, because I was now tired watercolor. And um, so anyway, he said, well, you should have an exhibit in the lobby. So I go up to the lab and I tell my friends who know me all too well, oh, Gloria's gonna do an exhibit? She finishes one or two watercolors a year and then she won't part with one. I thought, well, I'd started taking some etching classes down in Granville Island. I, I you know, I could, I could do them because I took first from Lona, the class, but then some of the people who really seemed to be into it, she said she could have what was basically a mentorship on Friday mornings. And when you work in research, you, uh, this medical research, so if a bone marrow comes in at five, you don't say bye everybody, you, you work overtime. So you had this time off, you had to book. And um, my partner and I, who did similar things, she liked Monday, she hated dragging herself in Monday. so. She'd take her time Monday. So I was there, I like to start weekend early so I could take Friday <clears throat> and wanna help these classes. And those of us who were especially interested would come and she'd do a little demo, but then you'd work on your plate and she'd go around and help us. So there'd be four or five of us there. And the thing was you had a plate and then after the demo, you'd start a new one, but then you could work on the other one. And this went on. So when the time this, you should have an exhibit came up, I thought, wow, you know, I don't know. I guess I could do some etching. 
And then it turned out that um, these are, and now I'm talking women mostly, were very talented. So my friend said, I do pottery, who works with I could bring some pottery, I guess, too. And this other one said, I do woodworking with my father and my brother. I could do that. And um, another person did photos that she'd go up to uh, polar bear country and stuff like that. So, so they all chipped in. And then the secretary said, well, well, you know, we could bake for you. And they got a local coffee maker to do coffee. Bottom line, this thing sort of mushroomed. And uh, we decided we would give it all to the Cancer Foundation because there wasn't a big budget for breast cancer research at the time. I'm now talking about 76, like, uh, was it? No, about 96, sorry, 1996. So anyway, we got it going, this book this time on a Friday. And I also had to go to meetings at Vancouver General, Children's Hospital and the agency because my boss for my specialty was in charge of them all at the time. So, you know, I, I guess I just told people we were having this and they'd take their overtime and everybody came and it was a big success and it carried on for 12, about 12 years till I retired and it kept it going a couple of years, but then it kind of fizzled. And the good thing was I do these etchings and all kinds of them would sell because I, I stole the French idea of the, um, the varied edition and I, I didn't have to just print print the same one, I could color them with my watercolor. And so, I, you know, I definitely, um, I really, they're my favorite. I did take courses, of woodcut with Taiga Shiba, if you know him, and um, uh, I did a silk screen, and we're going to get back into that at the, at the print studio shortly. So that was great. I liked doing it, but some of the things that, um, made it quite exciting that as Lona used to say, are you bitten by the acid, meaning you want to keep doing the printmaking. Where I did one on the False Creek Ferries, the Aquabus. And the first one I came in and we have to take turns being the attendant. And then we, we ha can have students of printmaking who are the attendant. So the attendant is different. I came in and she said, I just sold your ferry, the first one in the edition. And I said, where did it go? Because it's always exciting. She said, to Dubai. And at that time going with Dubai, like Dubai? Like who came to Vancouver from Dubai? Anyway, off that one way. And, um, and then my daughter's, I guess, fiance at the time had a sailboat in Granville Island Park down. And we were walking by and Tracy said, this is where my mom does her printmaking. And he looked in the window and he said, is that Tracy in the window? And sure enough, because we have these little prints, there's this little print of Tracy playing the piano. And yeah, I mean, uh, okay, so I, I just, can I have it? And I said, sure, I'll pick it up Monday when I come in. I go back and say to the attendant, oh, um, you know, can I have that? Where's that print of Tracy? It's not in the window anymore. And she said, oh, Tracy's gone to Ireland. And I thought, oh, she's gone to Ireland. And, Half my relatives are Irish and I've never been. So this, you know, this kind of, it's a little fun thing. And the, you know, there's lots of little stories, but the other one that I like, that some of the young fellows made fun of me and said, you did a shark? You did a shark, a print of a shark? Yeah, what, what's your problem? I love to snorkel and I went into a shark tank and you know, it was a young shark. So, and stingrays, stuff like that. And uh, I love water. <laughs> so anyway, first one of those someone tells me okay your shark has gone to Australia and I said what and this, yeah this lady bought it for her nine-year-old grandson I said well okay start collectors early so all that made it really interesting that prints were all all over the world and other interesting of course is all the again people from everywhere you met there's so many of us in the print that come and go but have totally different lives outside Kind of like people outside the lab have very different lives. So I found that great. And, and the commercial here for Granville Island is a great place to work is, you know, Opus Art Supplies supplies everything for us. But quite interesting, a lot of the Asian people found it interesting when I talk about the Asian papers I love to use. And there's a store called Paper Ya in the Netlock. All these exotic papers that you can do wonderful things to the print. And um, and of course the Federation, if you want to go look at, at paintings down the road. So 
it's, and the food across the street, all the food. You can have a different lunch, so international. You know, it's, it's a vibrant place to work on us. So that's, um, that's about the fact that I, yeah, I'm addicted. And uh, my friends were right. I, you know, I'm a great starter. I have more trouble finishing, but for the prints, because they're there and they sell them, I, I get them finished. Paintings seem to sit in my basement forever because you add another layer. So other than that, I guess uh, the new stuff is exciting. We have some new young members who are doing great things, helping our, um, helping our website, uh, giving classes. We, um, we hope to have a, a lino cut up and going before too long. And, and uh, another new member, he's revamping the whole silk screening. Ours is quite antiquated. So Arnold, you'll have to come back and visit. <laughs> I'll have to come back and visit. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, I, 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 I yeah. will. I'll make a point of that. So we still carry on the traditions, and yet we have yes. contemporary issues, and we have uh, we have digital people working now as well. Oh, that's great! So that's where we are now. Yeah, that's great. I, I will have to. I will pay a visit for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do get down to after I have my second shot. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's wonderful to get a. a a little snapshot of, of what the, the workshop is is kind of like now. And the fact that you've mentioned that artists come and go, um, but it's free for, or it's open to uh, all kinds of artists experimenting with, with printmaking and all the different kinds of things that you can do. It sounds like it's a real kind of... Uh, uh, and that's where I met Janet. And I, it was so great because we both loved Sybil Andrews prints and here she was writing a book and I have that too. <laughs> <laughs> And I did my I did my book launch there, fortunately pre-pandemic. So it was quite thrilling to be in a print workshop to talk about Sybil Andrews and her line of cuts. And I invited, you know, friends and relatives who were saying, wow, I I didn't know this kind of world existed with uh, printing presses and artwork that was done, you know, using this method. So uh, it's a great environment, and um, and I, I I really appreciated being there. Could I jump in uh, related to what uh, Gloria was saying about all the people who've come and gone, and just a little history and name dropping? Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, Wayne Eastcott, to get back to him, while he was teaching um, printmaking down at. Uh, Dunder Rave at the original site, which, by the way, was at Mathers, Mathers Avenue and 26, yeah, in the shed Excellent. there. People would come in, well, you know, they, pardon me? Was it Mathers? Mathers, sorry. I'm, I, I live downtown. I'm not pronouncing things right now. <laughs> Mathers. Um, Mathers and 26. Yeah. And the uh, south, uh, southeast corner. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, so uh, Wayne would run up to uh, Cat College where he was also, he set up a printmaking department up there. He was telling me this when I was interviewing him for the story. So that was another bit of energy going on that he was not only helping to set up Dunder Ave, but he, he, he was up in North Vancouver as well. Also, after Binning died, Wayne stayed close to his widow who lived to be 101 in that house and did a lot to preserve the legacy of her husband and also supported Dunder Rave through a, a scholarship that isn't going now, but it, it was going for a while. And she was an honorary member. Um, the other couple of printmakers I wanted to mention, Richard Tetralt came through Dunder Rave He's now at our rival over at our friendly rival over at Malaspina Printmakers on Granville Island. And of course, he's a very accomplished senior printmaker um, who's well known around the city. And Shin, he has a longer name, but people call him Shin. And if you Google S H I N, Shin, he's Japanese Canadian. He teaches printmaking for many years over at Emily Carr. And he came through Dunder Rave. Uh, so 
those are just uh, a few people who came through and, and, and sort of spread their energy by teaching and, and going off into other places. But, but there were many um, accomplished uh, uh, artists who've, who've spent time at uh, Dunderave over 50 years, as you can imagine. Yeah. Okay, Jen, the other thing, we, we get the students, you know, who come and work in our place as well as Malaspina, Mel and they have to, you know, be the attendant and do some duties so they can, um, they get to use the facilities and the three presses we have so they can build up a portfolio, mm -hmm. do whatever they want. So, uh, so we do provide that for students and uh, we're open to having them. It, check our website and we're also, um, uh, we often have about 25 members and we're down a few now with the uh, virus. And so we're, we're open to new members. If you know anybody who wants to either join as a member who has enough or will work there. So that's our commercial. <laughs> I guess you, uh, uh, when when the Emily Carr moved to oh, their new yeah. location a few right. years ago, I guess that must have been uh, it had to have been a bit of a disappointment. Mm -hmm. I yes. would think so. Yes, yeah. and we got students in there all the time, and a lot yeah, of I'm right. yes, <laughs> yes, that was a good thing. You know, having uh, the uh, the art school uh, 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 just down the street, five minutes away, five yeah. minute walk away. Yeah. Along with Opus Art Supplies, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, just to go sit up, you know. By the yeah, hours. yeah, right. it's yeah. Hmm. A quick reminder for everyone watching, if you uh, have any, any questions or comments uh, for our panelists, uh, please uh, leave them in either the chat or the, the Q&A. Uh, feature and we'll get to them closer to the end of the evening. One of the questions that was already asked was was answered about the location of the original uh, workshop when it was here in in Dundrave. So thanks for getting to that uh, already, guys. That's awesome. Uh, you were you had all sort of briefly touched a little bit on this sort of uh, uh, subject, but I'm just wondering, um, uh, Gloria and Arnold, uh, what? Uh, what did the experience uh, of working with the Dunderave Print Workshop, um, how did that uh, affect your artistic practices, uh, your artistic career, your sense of uh, kind of uh, the arts community here in uh, sort of the greater Vancouver area? Uh, um. Well, I'll I'll speak to that uh, to start with since I'm the <laughs> I'm the elder statesman here, <laughs> the elder artist. Um, it um, well, it opened up to me as I, I referenced that uh, earlier in our uh, in the uh, in the interview. I uh, said uh, I mentioned that uh, it opened up this whole world of printmaking. I had been involved in art, of course, for years, studied it uh, for a number of years in California and uh, studied art, but mainly painting. Uh, so this opened up for me a whole new realm. I really got into it. And it was the, um, uh, and then it was in 19, uh, uh, six, no, 74, and I was doing black and white. I was deliberately staying away from color. The first two years at Dunderave, I deliberately uh, stayed away from color. I figured, no, I'll just, because I was basically self-taught with Wayne from time to time, giving him a, a critique and giving me a few technical uh, pieces of technical advice. But um, I thought, no, it's, uh, that'll complicate things by getting into colors. Let's just make it really simple. So I was doing lino cuts and, and uh, black and white lino cuts and, uh, and also black and white uh, uh, 
or mono, monochromatic uh, uh, etchings. And, uh, and then I realized, you know, maybe this work would be a little more saleable if I had some color. <laughs> so I said, how can I make a lino cut multicolor? And I don't want a whole fuss, you know, I don't want to fuss with registration. Uh, I, re I recognize that's an issue you have to deal with when you're <laughs> doing color, uh, color additions. And so uh, I, I've been looking at uh, people like uh, Monk and uh, he did color, uh, uh, color block prints, right? Uh, uh, woodcuts. And he cut them up, you know, he cut out the different like jigsaws and uh, inked them up separately and put them back together and bingo, one, one run through the press and you've got a, a you know, a color print. So that seemed to be a good fit. So I latched onto that idea and uh, really found it exciting. That was in 1975, January, 1975. And I regarded that as sort of a turning point for me. And I, uh, yeah, uh, and that opened up for me a, a lot. And it gave me opportunities, showing opportunities Ex exhibition opportunities and uh, and uh, and sales opportunities and uh, it all it all fell together actually and uh, um, and I uh, it could have happened in some other fashion but uh, I think printmaking was a great uh, opening for me opening up to uh, a, the greater art world. And, uh, and it's also, and I think my, my background in painting was helpful, it was very helpful because I, it made, I think made me a little freer in, in my uh, uh, printmaking, uh, uh, the way I approached paint, uh, printmaking was in a way uh, because I've been painting for 10 years. So basically uh, it made me a little more, uh, I think that helped. Well, obviously it did help. I'm not sure how, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that answers your question, Stephen. Uh, is there, a, would you like me to, uh, uh, or, or maybe we should just move it over to, Gloria to have her, her uh, <laughs> That was great, Arnold. Yeah, that was great. Thank you, my life story already. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'll tell you, Gloria, there's one thing I have to ask you. Um, is that uh, there's a uh, there's an animal in the background. It looks like it's, uh, you know, it could be inspirational. Uh, it could be a, could be a, uh, you know, somebody's nightmare, too. I'm, I'm referring to that tiger. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, what's the story? Is it a stuffed tiger? It, it can, is it? Very short. It's a it's a uh, it's a very, very lovely one. Yes. And, um, <laughs> and the, the, I bought my first grandchildren one uh, almost as big. And of course, then, you know, I have a few more of them. And so at my house, I kept this one. And this is Snowflake. And they <laughs> love to you know, there are three boys and the girl who's actually the wildest of them, and pull it around and drag it around. And, and so <laughs> leave one. And I said, no, this is the one who makes it all safe when you sleep upstairs in the bedroom. She may not go down to the main floor with the cookies in the <laughs> So they have to play with her and she sleeps on the floor in the bedrooms. And ever since they were small, they're much bigger now. So now <laughs> it just stays there. And my husband's tax files are, Oh, <laughs> sitting there. They're done. They're done. You haven't uh, you you haven't uh, uh, done any prints based on that uh, no. uh, tiger no, toy. Just, tiger I, toy. It, right? You know, this was. Uh, I noticed that when I went to the Harmony Arts, walking along Bellevue, and beautiful stuffed animals in this children's shop. Yeah. They'd be at, in the window and quite a window shopper. You know, beautiful tigers, they get the most wonderful things. I haven't been down there lately. I hope they're still there. You know, so many, we lost so many good shops in this pandemic. So, but 
No, but you never know what, what inspires you to do. Well, exactly. And yeah. I don't know if uh, I find myself collecting things like, uh, oh, especially okay. in the woods, I'll collect, collect things that it might inspire me. Yeah. And usually they don't. But occasionally I do get some, you know, I can actually use these objects to, uh, to inform my art. Um, uh, yeah, I'm al always on the lookout, but uh, so far I haven't, uh, haven't collected a, a, you know, stuffed tiger uh, for uh, inspiration or to scare or to, uh, uh, as a protector for my, my grandchildren. Well, I have a whole big one. Of I'm sure the grandchildren would, would love to have a stuffed uh, yeah, tiger. Yeah. Dog. <laughs> I, I still keep finding art things to do in the garden, which I've so yes. enjoyed. That, yes. oh, I must admit, I haven't decluttered. I'll start another work of art before I do it. <laughs> yes. But it's great to have it in your life and you meet interesting people. So what can I say? You know, And, and even when it's your yeah. turn, I mean, I get nervous if I have to take money, but I do enjoy talking to people from all over who come into the gallery part. You know, that, yes. Uh, yeah, well, I really do enjoy that. Yeah. Um, well, and the other thing I was going to say, one of my favorite things, because I, I find drawing the hardest work to sit there. You know, I, uh, the 50 minute hour is all I can take. But, you know, like you said, coming into printmaking from doing other art, You've already learned about composition and design and color and you know lots of other stuff that, mm -hmm. that just helps, you know, like when you're cutting out something, as you said, you might not center it or you you might purposely put it off center once you yes. have some of this yes. stuff. So, you know, everything that you learn along the way comes in. Yeah, it comes comes into play, yes. Uh, Including your life life experiences. Yeah. Of course. In, in general, of course. Yeah. And yeah, um, you're right about, again, these things. Like one thing I wanted was I, when I, I'm a fruit person, I'm not very good at eating my vegetables. And so I, over here, you know, North Shore, you fight the blackberries and the English ivy and the buying wheat. And, and so I finally got a, a persimmon tree to grow. So then I, I did some persimmon prints, you see. So. Of course. You're always open to it. Yes. Yes. But we should ask Stephen, are you getting into art? Are you in art? Oh, um, Do you want to get in? <laughs> yes, besides working uh, as an administrator in the arts, I also am uh, a bit of an artist now now and then. I haven't, haven't got into printmaking since I was in uh, university. But uh, it's it's a really fascinating uh, art form to to play around with. It's pretty exciting. I'm back at any time. <laughs> we have openings. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So I'm wondering if uh, each of you uh, maybe want to maybe speak to us and let us know what you think uh, the sort of uh, one of the uh, what the biggest uh, contributions uh, the Dunderay Print Workshop has maybe made to uh, sort of the art world and the, and the, and the art community uh, around here. And, uh, and while you do that, um, I'm gonna pull up uh, some pictures of uh, uh, what the, uh, uh, from the first uh, shop down in Dundrave and uh, there'll be a little video of what the uh, current uh, shop looks like um, that, uh, an amazing artist and uh, printmaker with the Dundrave Print Workshop, Lonnie Trant, Lonnie Tratt let us, let us use from her, uh, her exhibition not that long ago. So uh, yeah, Janet, why don't we start with you? Uh, what do you think is one of the, uh, the biggest contributions that the Dundrave Print Workshop has, has, uh, has made to, uh, to the art world here? I always think it's fascinating um, when artists collectives are formed and, or, or any kind of a community collective where it depends on its members to keep things going. And so I think the fact that this artist run printmaking shop uh, has, you know, been the little workshop that could and that has survived 50 years and has had so many artists come through at every level of ability 
um, is commendable. And I think it's a wonderful, I think it's wonderful to celebrate 50 years. Yeah, awesome, definitely. Uh, Gloria, what do you think uh, has been one of the major contributions of the, the Dunderave Print Workshop? I, I think it's, it contributes, but it's a mutual benefit having the students come and work in our shop and learn the techniques that will help them along the way, for sure. We, in, we enjoy them. We get a lot out of it. We see new exciting stuff when they first start lino cut sprint and the energy they put into it. They're not so cautious as some, but definitely uh, for them to get that experience, there's there's nothing like hands-on experience. It sort of equates with the science world when we would take co-op students and it would help them then get better jobs because they've actually worked in the lab handling, you know, could be virus material or people's bloods or bone marrows and looking down the microscope. And yeah, so I think I, I, I like that interaction with young people and seeing them get enthused. And actually Janet came in and did a course too while she would well she was you know working and you know so it, you learn a little bit about uh, I I think it helped Janet a lot because she oh yeah it was wonderful yeah. and then the last print you you made um, when you got into the hear, hearing the, uh, about the jigsaw would mm -hmm. uh, yeah I have never done that one because I had this idea of a saw going <laughs> you know yeah. Yeah, so that was great. Yeah, thanks. Awesome, and uh, and Arnold, what what do you, what do you consider one of the major contributions? Uh, major contributions. Um, uh, well, uh, it's made printmaking available to. Uh, it, it's popularized uh, printmaking, made it more accessible to people in Vancouver, in the, in the Vancouver area. Um, maybe not large numbers, but nevertheless, some people, and it all, you know, these, it's a little shop. It remains a small shop. It's not a major, you know, uh, actually the, uh, the, uh, uh, our, uh, Friends down the street, uh, uh, Malaspina, are bigger, uh, but uh, Dunderave has nevertheless contributed. And some people, uh, I think that was mentioned, uh, that uh, you know Richard Tetro started at Dunderave and then he moved on to Malaspina. And I know a number of people have done that, and you know, so it's uh, it's all. Um, it's, it's a part of the fabric of the cultural fabric of, it's become a part of the cultural fabric of uh, Vancouver, the vi uh, visual art, arts fabric of, of Vancouver. And uh, I, I wouldn't know how to assess how big a thing that is, but it is something, it's a positive thing. And uh, it's a positive, certainly in my career, I mean, <laughs> I simply wouldn't be the artist I am now uh, if, if not for the Dundere Print Workshop. So I, uh, I am eternally grateful. I should remind myself of that action, maybe <laughs> and get down there and visit the, uh, visit the, uh, uh, the uh, print shop and uh, you know, pay a little more attention. <laughs> but, uh, um, anyway, I guess, I guess that's about it. I mean, we, we can't pretend it's, uh, you, you know, that it's a uh, world-class print shop. It's a co-op and it's, uh, it's accessible to, uh, I, I think the uh, beginners and I was certainly was a beginner when I got it. And, and that's why it was so important to me. Uh, I was a beginner. In, in printmaking and uh, it was easily accessible to me. And I think it, as far as I can see, it remains that way. And there's, a very, there's an important place for such um, 
such enterprises in the uh, cultural um, ecosystem in the uh, visual, visual arts in, in, uh, in Vancouver. And uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. I was just going to mention <clears throat> the mini print exhibit that Peter Braun puts on. Did you ever participate in that? Yeah, yes, I And we get all these little prints from all over the world. And yeah, that, and yeah, yeah actually, I've, I've worked with Peter. Well, actually, it used to be. It was started, uh, you know, the uh, that shop was started by um, uh, a, a printmaking uh, instructor at uh, Emily Carr called Gary Bowden. Gary Bowden founded, he called it Western Pacific Engravers. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he owned it for and ran it for several years. And then Peter Braun took it over. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Peter Braun is really, uh, he'd done great things with it. Yes. Um, but of course, it's, you know, it's a for, uh, it, it, it's not a co op. Like well, no, done great, we, but but worked in in tandem, you know, and, and but we all work together, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, yes, I I've uh, submitted several. I think uh, twice I entered the mini uh, uh, the mini print uh, competition, and uh, yeah, it was a good experience. Oh yeah, and uh, but you know I don't want to be always doing uh, mini prints. I've done too many mini prints actually, <laughs> but but it's fun. That, that was a, a fun well, thing. I hope Peter keeps it the going. The world does, and we host it, and the federation also. Hosts oh, you, it. you yes, I know the feder the federation host ho well. hosted it, uh, 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 but also Dunderave hosts. It. And then it moves to Florida, I think. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that was a good, a great, uh, and uh, yeah, well, that's good. That's that's wonderful. Um, yeah. Um, and anyway, um, nice place to shop for little gifts and things when you're. Yeah. Well, yes. It, mini prints. I've sold a number of my small prints. In fact, they seem to do quite well. So maybe I should get back more in, into that a little more. <laughs> well, it a, you know, and after all, you're talking about Rembrandt's prints. Well, they're not necessarily all miniatures, technically miniatures, but uh, most of them are quite small, right? Um, you know, they're small plates. Um, they're done off small copper plates. Um, uh, you don't. You don't have to do. Uh, you know, uh, they don't have to be giant prints, but uh, giant prints do, you know, uh, three by four feet or whatever. And Peter, Peter Braun, well, he was doing those, uh, you know, the big, uh, uh, the steam, steamroller prints. Steamrolling over a print. You probably know about that, right? I don't know if Dunderay was involved at all. Malaspina, I think some of the printers from Malaspina helped uh, print those. Yeah. Uh, 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 they kindly contributed. Maybe a few people from Dunray yeah, did too. I don't know. The market with the steamroller rolling over the prints. Yeah. Did you? Were you there, Gloria? Oh did yeah. You yeah. See yeah. Well, I never it, did one that big, but uh, no. Yeah, one I, of I, like to, has done I, I actually <laughs> did uh, uh, did two with uh, with Peter, yeah. and Richard Tetro was involved too, yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, it was uh, kind of exciting actually. Mm -hmm. like a performance art but yeah. um but it's all part of you you know Dunder Rave is is all part of that ecosystem really right. of that kind of artistic ecosystem and uh uh you wouldn't have Peter you know Peter Braun has has uh, uh has um leveraged the uh, the culture that was already there like Dunder Rave and Malaspina and, uh, mm -hmm. and Opus uh, Opus Art Supplies and and uh, he's levers that into you know a, a viable um, uh, printing operation. Uh, we do try to participate in anything when Granville Island has something special, like you know they have they have Dragon Fest and stuff like yes, that. Yes, yes. Yes. 
Yeah, but it, in a way, those large um, uh, the prints that I did with uh, Peter Braun, um, the uh, uh, on four by eight uh, uh, sheets, uh, uh, you know, big woodcuts, really. But I did them like uh, you know, the, as as um, uh, uh, monkey puzzle <laughs> kind of uh, uh, prints. But that, where I learned that technique was at Dunderave. That's where I came across. That's where I. That, that's where I uh, discovered that wonderful technique for getting multicolor uh, print, and uh, and it was nice to return to that on Granville Island, down the street from uh, uh, Dunderave Print Workshop. Is it all your old haunts? <laughs> yeah, my old haunts. It was kind of, kind of special, actually. Yeah. And, and I think uh, one of our present members, uh, Leonard Brett, he, he was yeah, Leonard. When he first moved to Granville Island. Yeah, Leonard, Leonard Brett. Yes. Yeah, he's in Sunshine yes. Coast now, but he's still a member. And he oh, he is. Interesting oh, okay. work. Some very big and heavy since I just hung our summer show. <laughs> oh, okay. He's still a uh, Leonard. I'd like to get in contact with uh, Leonard, actually. Okay. Um, yeah. he, he, he is a member. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. 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 I like, I like uh, Leonard. I haven't seen him in a long time. I see. He had a. Probably uh, the same. <laughs> he's probably the same. I remember he used to live in a, a, a rental place in West Van. And he put on this big uh, ro uh, roasted pig, and he had it on a spit on a barbecue. This pig, and <laughs> we had, he had quite a party. It was quite a party. <laughs> wow! Color <laughs> got everywhere, just like it does in the studio. <laughs> yeah, Leonard was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he. Uh, um, uh, I have one of his prints, actually. Uh, it, it seems to be, I guess it's a, an engraving, actually. Yes. Of, of, uh, of He's one of the few who do. He actually engraving. went into, he, yeah, like engraving. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Very eclectic, his prints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to see what uh, Leonard's up to these days. Oh, yeah. he just built a new studio up on the Sunshine Coast. Oh, okay. Oh, great. Oh, he, that's... He's still with us. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. good. Uh, a lot of great artists who are currently part of the, uh, the Dendrave Print Workshop. And you can see all of them if you just uh, visit their website. There's a little, a little bit about each of them, including Gloria. <laughs> okay, yeah. very good. I'll... Uh... It's wonderful to, as we've talked tonight, to hear that kind of the the history of the Dunderif Print Workshop has very much involved uh, community, whether that's building up a community of printmakers um, and sharing that with uh, a new generation of artists, and also being involved in community events, like all the things uh, that, that you currently and have been doing down on Granville Island. That seems to be a real... Uh, a real through line throughout the history of this uh, 50 year old organization, which is uh, pretty <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think it's about time we start uh, wrapping things up. Uh, so, but I'll quickly just remind everyone uh, that you can grab this great book um, about the history of the Dunderave Print Workshop. Um, it's really a fascinating read. Um, some of you'll know, uh, you'll read about some of the things that were mentioned tonight and a whole bunch of other things um, that we didn't get a chance to talk to because we had such a great conversation and there's great photos in it um, and it's all for a good cause. The proceeds go to the Dunderave Print Workshop um, and it will help celebrate their 50th uh, anniversary. Uh, and you can get it again, you can get it uh, at the Dunderave Print Workshop in person. Um, I think you can get it on their website as well. Um, <laughs> And if you can't make it down to Granville Island and you're here on the North Shore, you can come pick it up at the Silk Purse Arts Center. 
So I wanted to thank uh, our wonderful panelists, Arnold Shives, Gloria Shaw, and Janet Nickel, uh, for thank being you. here with us this evening and sharing all these fascinating tidbits and uh, insights into uh, this amazing workshop and gallery and, uh, and just the insights into artists and uh, writers who delve into these subjects. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Stephen. Yeah, and, uh, and thanks to everyone uh, who came out tonight and uh, hope you all take care and stay safe and stay creative. Good night. Great. Good night. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Good night.